<sighs> you know what? I get handed tools, and uh, I have no idea. Uh, I always look like a bumbling idiot because it's like, okay. Um, no, this is a common tool. This is okay, a common com question, common tool. Okay. Just an interesting one of them. All right. Okay, close your eyes. All right, they are. I can't tell if your eyes are closed. I, I, I'm telling Cover you. Cover your eyes with your hand. Thank you. Okay, now guess, guess what it oh, is. Guess what it is. Okay, hold your hand out. Up. Oh, I got a whole. Oh, okay. It's scissors. Okay, but wow, the the weight is way. Okay, I'm gonna go towards my leg, because the weight is way down low. I, when I do this, I can tell there's some weight out there. Oh my God, there's my leg. Uh, <laughs> Fabric scissors. I don't know why you. Okay, I, I I'm gonna. You can look. I'm gonna look. Holy moly! <laughs> now, when somebody says, "Go ahead, keep messing with me. I'll stab you with my scissors." Oh, I gotta tell you, this is a true story. <laughs> I haven't thought of this in years. I actually stabbed my brother with a pair of scissors. Right, I did. I, I haven't heard this one. I did. I stabbed him in the leg with a normal pair of scissors. Okay, I was 12, Roy was 16, three of his friends come over. So now there's 16, there, there's four 16 year olds in the house. So they decide, and Roy never picked on me. My, my two brothers, my sister and I have never had an argument. Okay, I'm 70, we, we never argued, we didn't fight, we didn't have problems, we didn't have troubles, you know. But anyway, Rick Bonner, there was Cecil Cook, Rick Bonner, uh, my brother Roy and I think it was uh, Ron Bellis, and he was a little big, okay? And so anyway, they decided to pick on me. We had this big couch. They wrestled me to the couch, laid me down, and sat on me. Okay, now four <laughs> times, let's say, 160 pounds was killing me. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, it was just literally, it hurt real bad. And I screamed at my brother, you know, get the F off of me. I said, you're hurting me. Well, it kind of went on. Then Roy finally said, hey, okay, get off of him. Oh, I had said something about if you don't, I'll make you pay for it. Well, anyway, when they, I, one hand was free and there was a pair of scissors and I turned, I grabbed the scissors and I just stabbed him right into his leg. And that ended the whole thing, I'll guarantee you. Later, I said I was sorry. He said he was sorry. Rick and Cecil and Ron uh, came back, said they were sorry. So anyway, I, I, that's a true story. I really actually did that. I stabbed my <laughs> so, brother in the leg. So the, one of the most scissors. popular questions we get is not how to stab someone with the scissors, but yeah. how, to, how to sharpen your scissors. That's the most question. <laughs> uh, oh, there's so Brad, uh, how would you sharpen those scissors? And I see there's some snow behind you. Well, you know, there is some snow, um, you know, behind me and, and the dogs, they're playing in the snow. So uh, you might catch them over there playing in the snow. <laughs> Uh, good dog. Yeah, it's a great yard. It's good snow. Um, it hasn't melted off all that much yet. So anyway, sharpening scissors. If you uh, you take your scissors, they're what's called a bypass cutting tool. So this one passes by that one as it. Well, I don't know how you get it. Of course, everybody knows how scissors work. Okay, this one is going to go past uh, that one like this. So if you have a relief bevel. Okay, and the relief bevel is a little bit on the back like this, so the scissors are thin, and the object that you're cutting can kind of slide down off of that. So if you turn it over, you're gonna find the identical same thing on this pair of scissors. Some scissors are not that way. Some have a bypass and a 90 degree, uh, probably for di cutting different, uh, maybe leather or something, you know. So anyway, they have a short, uh, a small angle on that side right there. Can we get a full length paper test on that thing? Um, sure. So let's, uh, okay, today we're using uh, Denver Magazine. We've done that a lot in the past. And this poor thing has been torn up, pages torn out of it. Um, well, it's a new year, time for a new magazine. You know, and uh, so, but, and it's getting warm. I may have to take my vest off. Um, so full length, boop, that way, this way. Holy cow, you can't eat. My hand isn't big enough to actually really get them open. Okay, so what would you say? How long are those things? Right. Uh, well, from the rivet out. Uh, That's a good oh, they're foot. Ten, they're, I'd say nine inches, nine inch. Where if you're cutting bolts of fabric, and once you start with with sharp scissors, 
you get it down and you move it shut ever so slightly and just go right across the bolt of fabric. So those are actually pretty cool. I don't know where those came. Uh, there's no name on them or anything. All right, so let's see. Okay, they're actually pretty good. So I'm gonna take a look at something. If they've been used a lot on, and I can see it because as I move it in the sun like this, it's kind of like diamond, uh, like the glints of diamond. Okay, right here on the cutting edge, as this scissor comes down because they try to overlap and that's what causes them to cut. Okay, and there's a little shine on this edge and see how that's not, this is gonna be the test. See how that doesn't really stick to my finger? It does a little if I tip it up and push harder, then it bites, okay? But it doesn't bite when I just do this. Like that. And I will admit this video is twofold. Those are my scissors. They've been giving me a hard time. So by demonstrating to them? the people, you're sharpening them for me. Okay. Two birds, one stone. All right. Yeah, man. When you get back in here, of course, the closer yeah. you get back here, the more it's, it's cut off and out here. See how that actually bites? That's because you really almost never use scissors all the way out. You go along, you go like this, you know. Okay. So, um, Let's uh, go ahead and start these. So first of all, I'm going to use the Sharpen Spark Mini. Okay, and uh, I always show you we have 90 degree corners. People say, "Well, slow down and show me the 90 degree corner," which I can't even begin to figure out because if it's flat this way, it turns and it comes back equally. It's a 90 degree corner. Okay, so we got a 90 degree corner, 90 degree corner. We're going to slide that 90 degree corner. Um, <laughs> and, uh, there they are. Yeah, the, the dogs um, are actually, now they're behaving. <laughs> they kind of, yeah, there you are. Um, there's about 11 or 12 dogs in a dog sitting yard. It isn't like we actually have 11 dogs or 12 dogs. Um, so let's get situated here. Put this up on my leg. Hi, Cabo. Are you, uh, my buddy today. he's always my cobble's always my buddy okay so we're going to tip it a little bit so this is actually just barely uh off of flat to the work you know like that right there would be 90 degrees okay so i'm going to tip it just a little bit because this is going to be up in the air just a little bit i'm going to come back in here and as always i don't go all the way out it takes too long and i can control the sharpener better this way I can add a little more pressure to it this way and go right on out like that I watch the shine on the scissors and if it shines too much here on the cutting edge then I got to tip it down a little bit if it shines a little bit too much back there I have to tip it up just a little bit okay and so I just watch in the Sun the shine make sure that I'm matching that bevel and I can act that's a big enough bevel I can actually find it this way okay I tip it up and go down there okay because when that straight edge matches that straight edge you'll actually feel it okay so just like this go right on out and a lot of people out there you know right about now you're screaming at the video oh my god don't ever do that to your scissors people please please don't do that to your scissors yeah for the most of it they don't have a clue what they're talking about now a pair of four hundred dollar scissors uh, maybe I wouldn't, maybe I would, if I did this two or three times just for a tune-up, you have to understand I'm taking almost nothing off of that blade. And if you actually need to fix them, all you got to do is hand, send them in and have them ground and they'll take about two thousandths of an inch off. That really puts it back to absolute factory standards. So let's say you tune it up three times, $30 a tune-up, $90. So if you're using your scissors all the time, if you can make $90 that way, or make $90 cutting fabric to sew things together, as long as you're making money and not ruining your scissors, as far as I'm concerned, you're ahead in the game. Plus, you're shipping, mailing it, and all that stuff. So, if you have $400 scissors, they probably sharpen it free if you'll mail it to them. So, just like this, move right on out. I have uh, put a little pressure on this because I actually need to cut the blade a little bit, especially back here. You can hear this little singing, this little uh, sound. That's because when they ground this, they used a slightly aggressive grindstone 
to actually leave little tiny grooves uh, in, in the cutting edge. Those little tiny grooves actually bite the fabric as it goes in so that it's easier to cut it. And that's what that sound is. It's the grooves in the blade from the grinding wheel. Just like that. Move right on out. Now remember the tip was pretty sharp to start with out there because it gets used a little. All right, so what we're going to do now, um, oh, I can't, I can't get all the way across. Now here I can, right to there. Why is that important? If I can get the cutting edge on the sharpener absolutely flat, then I can run it along like this and take that burr off and have no chance of tipping it, you know, and uh, actually beveling the cutting edge. So on the back, I'm gonna touch it really, really light. Now, what I would suggest if you're doing this, you can touch it super, super, super light or get a little one inch uh, wide, half inch thick, three inch whetstone, lay it flat and rub it forth and back like that. Okay, that takes the burr off. Then you have to do this. And then again with the whetstone. Now I can feel that little burr. When I did this, it put the burr back up here. And right about there is where it fits flat again. So just like that, touch it super light, turn it over. Tip it again like this, run along like this. Okay, now if you come down here and look, I only touched it about six times. Maybe you can see the shine on what I'm going to call the heel and the shine on the toe. The reason it's only touching there is actually very simple. When you take a round object like a wheel, a grinding wheel, and you grind that, there's just ever, ever, ever so slight a deeper part in where the bottom of the round wheel actually settled. So it'll touch on the heel and the toe before it gets to the center, okay, to the belly of, of the grind. So just like this, move right on along like that, right on out. Keep the scissors pretty firm like this and let it sing. Pick on them, they'll sing, they'll tell you what's going on. <laughs> Cut their face. All right, now we gotta get back to about here. And once you actually get flat, it's pretty easy because I didn't tell my arm or my this hand to move. So once I get flat, we just do this. And we do that a little bit, that a little bit. That is really starting to bite. This isn't going to bite as good, so let's do it just a little more. Remember I said that's where it's rounded off more. Hi, oh, buddy. How you doing? Huh? You have quite the audience. Yeah. My business has gone to the dogs. They're good dogs. Have you noticed how well-behaved all these dogs are? They're not running around barking. My uncle had a saying, and this was pretty funny, because <laughs> he said, you got a dog, you got a dog. You got two dogs, you got half a dog, you got three dogs, you got no damn dog at all, because all they're doing is running around sniffing each other's butt, biting and, and uh, terrorizing each other, and they won't pay any attention to you at all. Um, and actually, these dogs are doing very well. All right, let's get this taken care of. Just like that. I'm definitely seeing a shine all the way across that blade. So I know I've actually taken quite a bit of metal off. I mean, it's just maybe one thousandth, two thousandths, but if you can take two thousandths of an inch off this way, that's quite a bit of metal. All right, so just like that, like that. Jacob, you're gonna watch this video. I know you are. And that chicken of yours loves your blue pants. That chicken's name is Wilma. Add to the comments below. We'll see you one of these days down in Nevada. Maybe when I, I'm trying right now to put it all together. I wanna to go to Burning Man this year. 
Okay, and the dust storms and, and the problematic, uh, you know, the dust and the dirt. Um, I already have slightly tender lungs from being a welder and all the stuff that I've done and sheetrocking and painting and heavy equipment and chainsaws and uh, dirt and dropping cars at a rock quarry. Dropping what? So what does dropping cars mean? You have, you have 135 cars that you push back up on a line. The rock quarry is here. You're loading ballast for the railroad, so you have a conveyor belt that comes out. You have what's called a gondola car, which is a half car, and they hold 75 tons of one inch rock. So you drop the car down to the conveyor belt, you start the conveyor belt, you fill it up to a certain point, and then you drop the car down further, you fill it up to a certain point, you drop the car down further, and you fill it up again. So you have basically three equal piles in this gondola car which I found out one day you can actually knock a gondola car off the tracks. Um, and I was just, <laughs> I was like 23 years old and I was just told, <laughs> don't shake the hydraulics on a 25 ton open end dump cat hauler with rock in it because I got to put 75 tons in the gondola car and we called that riprap, okay, and they're big rocks. So three, four rocks, five rocks will equal 75 tons, they're big, okay? So I got backed up uh, to the ramp where I was gonna dump in. I, I raised the bed on the truck, I raised it, I raised it, nothing moved. Then it moved a little bit and it just sat there and I raised it all the way up. Now it's, it's, it's literally like this and nothing happened and it wouldn't come out. So I rocked the truck a little bit, nothing happened, and I reached down and I bumped the hydraulics and, and the bed went bloop. And that whole 25 tons of rock came out, hit the other side of the gondola car and tipped the gondola car, which weighs about 80 tons, right off of the tracks up on its side. And that's the day I learned that railroad cars are only held on to what's called the trucks. Okay, so you got four wheels, you know, two here, two here, you know, like that. And then it's got a framework and then it's got a peg about 10, 12 inches in diameter in the center that only sticks up about that far. So if you just take the car and pick it up and set it off, you can do that. Okay, it's just, they're just sitting on the, what's called the trucks, the wheels. So anyway, the rock come out, wham, hit it, boom, in an instant. It wasn't upright anymore. It was upright this way on its side and the rock was out on the ground and um, so anyway uh, I didn't show back up you know and the boss watches the trucks coming and going he knows who's having troubles and uh, Fred Dooley was his name and and he, he came down there and he goes what did I just tell you and I said well they wouldn't come out and I waited and I moved the truck and I thought I could just wiggle it and he says, well, thank God the National Guard is kind of on our payroll and they're not very far away. So they trucked a, a crane over big enough to set the car back on the trucks and then went and got a, a 988 cat front end loader and put the rocks back in. But I never shook the hydraulics again. <laughs> and, part, and part of the reason, he says, when you have 25 tons plus the bed, probably weighed 20 tons, banging down on the hydraulics. He says, you can blow those hydraulic lines or cylinders, you know. And um, so anyway, I never did it again. Uh, All right. Let's so, cut some papers. Let's cut some papers. Just like <clears throat> well, you live and learn, right, Brad? I mean, yeah. Oh, live and learn. Yeah, I was just a kid, kind of. Um, I actually worked. Oh, I actually, actually, that's. See how my thumb kind of jerks and, and stops and, and comes off there like, okay, like like that. that. That's getting pretty sharp. So let's try the other side. Not as sharp, but it's definitely starting to catch. So let's do this. This is always, okay, it won't move until, look right down in there, the fingernail. Okay, that's obviously pretty sharp. I started actually working at that rock quarry with my stepdad when I was five years old. I started welding at five in the crusher. I can explain a rock quarry and the crushers and everything in it very well. Now, something that I did notice, and, and it would be, okay, back in, it's very smooth, okay, so that works really good. So long scissors, that's how you sharpen them, and uh, let's see if I can turn, you're going to see this, but what I'm telling you to look for now is you're going to look for streaks of shininess, 
okay, of shine. That's an indication that when I did this, like that, okay, I'm gonna do this for just a few seconds. And I'm actually gonna cut, okay, whew, now you can see it. <laughs> okay, so right there, at about my angle to you, you're gonna see how incredibly shiny that is. And then some of the shine stops right there. Next time we're at a show, I'm going to show you my scissors that I use all the time at the show. And you're going to see that I've actually cut. Now, again, see, this is what they call surface grinding. So you put your steel out there. You have a, a surface grinder, and the bottom is probably magnetic. So you put them out there, and you lower this wheel down, and the surface grinder comes in. And it might be that big around. They might have 20, 30, 50, maybe even 100 of those on there. And they grind that down. They grind this down. Then they put it in a machine, they grind it this way, and they stop on it here. And this is probably all done by machine. And um, so that's a little explanation of how they make scissors. And boy, these are actually, I can feel that they grab all the way out. That's pretty cool. That's how you sharpen big Mucho Mondo scissors. You guys take care.